where exactly is the Earth? What, the Milky Way? Cool, now where's that? Exactly. Let's get to it. Okay, so we know our planet, Earth. 70% water, comfortable temperature, great music and culture. 10 out of 10 would visit again, but where exactly is the Earth? The Earth is here, in the inner solar system orbiting a star, called very imaginatively by humans, the Sun or Sol, to give it its Latin better name. The Sun is a rather mediocre but stable main sequence star that is about halfway through its life cycle. In about 4 billion years it will swell and completely obliterate all traces of our long dead civilization, but we haven't gotten to that bit yet. It is currently powered by fusion of hydrogen into helium and energy, and weighs 9.8 nonillion kilograms, which is such a massive number that our primitive simian brains can't even visualise that massive amount especially the ones that still use Imperial. The Earth orbits 149 million kilometres, or one astronomical unit, away in the inner solar system, while Jupiter is five times further out, Neptune is at 30 AU, and the edge of the solar system and Voyager are between 80 and 100,000 AU away, which is very specific. But where's the solar system? Right, here's where it gets interesting, and I can start filling this video with more facts and less spite. Our nearest stars are Proxima, guess what that's called in Latin, and Alpha Centauri, which are 4.4 light years away, as well as Barnard Star, Wolf 359, and quite a lot of others. It's quite hard to visualise our position in 3D space, but I'm going to try my best, or will try my best, as I haven't edited this video yet. This is made especially hard as all of these surrounding stars are travelling in random different directions compared to us. Our local neighbourhood of stars is inside an interstellar gas cloud called the Local Cloud. In fact, the Sun will enter a separate cloud called the G-Cloud in the next 20 millennia or so. Both of these clouds are flowing out from a dense area of star-forming gas called the Scorpius Centurus Association, which sounds like an accounting business, but for our human purposes we can just ignore most movement as it really won't matter on the timescales we're talking. In the cloud there aren't as many stars as elsewhere in the galaxy, but the whole thing is 1.5 million astronomical units, or 30 light years across, which is pretty small compared to what's to come. Zoom out further when we see our local interstellar cloud is pretty much exactly halfway down the Orion arm of the Milky Way, which is about 10,000 light years long, but despite this figure it is only a very minor arm as it offshoots from the massively large Perseus arm, which is about three and a half times larger. Yeah, and this leads us to the Milky Way, you may have heard of it. It's our galaxy, and for once it's kinda big compared to its neighbours, but not the biggest, we'll get to that later. It's a barred spiral galaxy called that because of the bar shape in the centre, and it's over 150,000 light years across, around 2,000 light years thick with a bulge in the middle, weighs an amazing 0.5 tredecillion kilograms, which is over 400 billion times what the sun weighs, and looks also something like this. Yeah, this or a version of this is literally the only photograph we have, because this solar system is the only perspective we have, and we are inside the thing we are trying to photograph, which makes it a bit difficult. Yeah, it's not like we can step back and look at it from the side, because not only will it take a million years for even light to get that far, but there is no side in space, it's all relative. So how do we know what it would look like? Well, we can calculate how far away they are due to how far they appear to have moved in a six month span. In reality, we're the ones that have moved, but judging from how far that star has moved relative to distant galaxies, called its parallax, we can determine through simple geometry how far away they are. Also, we see other galaxies from the side or top or whatever and work out generally how galaxies are structured. We can't see most of the stars on the other side of the core due to the intense light and mass there, but applying our general rules of galaxies to the distant stars we can see, we get a map something like this. Hooray! Usually in films also you hear about the alpha quadrant of a galaxy, but quadrants are a thing for real galaxies as well, except they're numbered and technically we're in two? Yeah, because the zero degree line, the equivalent of the Greenwich Meridian for the galaxy, is always drawn so that it intersects with the Sun, which is a very self-centred thing to do, but we don't exactly have much else to base it off of. But like our Sun, the Milky Way has its own local cluster of galaxies, and that's what it's called, the local cluster. Most are tiny compared to ours, and some even orbit the Milky Way, like planets to a star. The Milky Way is one of the biggest in the local cluster, and second only to the Andromeda Galaxy. 
it is a widely known fact that these two galaxies are destined to collide, and the black holes at the centre of each will merge and form the initially chaotic Milk Dromeda Galaxy. Hopefully, in the 3.5 billion years until then, we can come up with a better name than Milk Dromeda. I mean, come on, that's worse than calling our galaxy Eric. Just call it Eric instead of Milk Dromeda is probably better. But for now, that's our local cluster. Zoom out further and we see the Virgo Supercluster, a cluster of clusters, including the local cluster and the Virgo cluster, which gives the cluster its name. Have I said cluster enough for cluster to lose its meaning of cluster? Cluster, 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 cluster. Anyway, it's approximately 100 million light years across, and in it, there are 100 clusters with their own stars and their own worlds. Yeah. These stars are too far away to use the star's parallax to measure their distance, so we're going to have to use the very light itself, using the Doppler effect. Okay, a quick subtle ninja edit here. I completely messed up the definition of the Doppler effect, so I'm going to try to explain it to you without a script. Hooray, this isn't going to go wrong whatsoever. The Doppler effect occurs when the thing that's emitting this light or sound is travelling at a different speed to you. That has the effect of squashing or stretching the sound or light waves. Now, with light, this can manifest itself as a higher or lower colour on the spectrum. With sound, it's a higher or lower pitch. That's why when sirens go past, it seems higher, and then as it goes past and is moving away from you, it seems lower. This has the effect in space of, because of the expansion of the universe, the further things are moving faster away, and therefore the more stretched out the light is. As a result, it looks more red, and the universe slowly turns red as you go away from us. This is called redshift, and this is technically how we find out how far away things are. Yeah, I didn't mess that up whatsoever. So we must be getting close to the size of the universe, right? Nope, as we zoom out to the Laniakea supercluster, which is a cluster of clusters of clusters. Hmm. Yeah, this weirdly named group has over 300 to 500 superclusters and 100,000 galaxies, each with billions of stars, and all of them are out there right now. Yeah. Also in the Laniakea supercluster is the rather ominously named Great Attractor, which is kind of ominous in real life as well. It's this thing that we can't see that has a mass tens of thousands of times more than our own galaxy. But in theory, with all that mass we should be able to see it, right? Well, we probably could if it weren't for the Milky Way's core being in the way, so we can't see it. Thanks a lot, Milky Way. I know we owe our existence to you, but you do get annoying sometimes. Okay, so here we go, zooming further out, and we've stopped? Why have we stopped? We can't be here already. Oh, it seems we've reached the edge of the observable universe, and we can't see any further. It's kind of in the name. The light coming from there was emitted 13.8 billion years ago, and that light we are seeing now. But in that time, that object has moved away from us to the point where it's 47 billion light years away now. So that's how we get the radius of everything we can see, known as the observable universe. We can't see any further as those objects that emit light haven't been around long enough for the distance from further away to reach us. So in a system, in a cloud, in an arm of a galaxy, in a cluster, in a cluster, in a cluster, in the universe, we are here. I'll also talk about the start of everything and what came before that and the depressing but inevitable end to the universe so see you then try not to have an existential crisis in the meantime